Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shank, and I am with the eClinical Works podcast team. Today, we have the pleasure and the privilege uh, to speak with uh, one of our practices, Pecos Valley Medical Center. Uh, I'm here with Ashley and Alessandro. Um, folks, why don't you just introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your practice. Well, yes, my name is Alessandro Briancesco. I'm one of the clinical informaticists at Pecos Valley Medical Center. There's a lot of us. There's, that you're looking at them right here, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm Ashley Young, and I am the other part of this huge crowd of um, CIs at Pecos Valley Medical Center. Excellent. So tell me um, a little bit about your practice, your clinic, maybe the types of people that you serve, your providers. Tell us just a little bit about that. Well, our clinic is located in Pecos, New Mexico, which is southeast of Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. It's very rural. We are a pretty isolated community center. Um, we are, for many people in this area, the only access to healthcare that they have. Um, the center, in some form, has been in Pecos since 1975. In 1991, it became an FQHC. Um, and this past year, 2017, we are now PCMH and AAAHC accredited. All right. So Ooh. we've come a long way. Tell me, now that we know a little bit about uh, PECOS, what your respective roles are in this organization? Well, she, she's the face. <laughs> and I'm the magic man in the background. <laughs> no. um, what I do is I, I do the, the clinical reporting, make sure we have the structured data um, set in place. Um, we work together to troubleshoot and vet the system to make sure that it's working um, optimally for the end user. Sure, sure. And we also develop the workflows with the providers, with the clinical team, with advice from all of the ECW help and trainings. Um, we work in the office live with the clinical team so we can see how it goes and help them make good habits out of our training and we troubleshoot everything and talk to the tech. We're it. We're <laughs> we are the ECW team at Pecos Valley Medical Center. That's awesome. And tell me, how long have you used eClinical Works? And, you know, what are some of the modules that you guys have used, are planning to use? So um, I've been working with the clinical for about three years now, only one year with Pecos Valley Medical Center at this point. Um, right now we are um, using Hilo. Um, of course, we're using medical. We will be using uh, the dental module or, uh, shortly. Yeah. So that's going to be exciting. Like yeah. our, our dental practice, they're like, oh, we want to be cloud-based. Can ECW do that? Yep. <laughs> oh, we need to be able to pull all this data, like not just a single data element at a time. Can ECW do that? Yes, um, we're, we're using um, Dragon as well. With, um, we're going to be working with our providers to use Scribe, and we are working in 10E so that we can go ahead and start moving forward with that, especially after hearing about you know, what 11E's capability is. We have to be on the cloud. And do you guys also leverage like patient engagement tools or anything like that in your particular area? So we have gotten a slow start on the portal in Hilo, but now that is our current active project. So we're here really, I'm here to get as much Hilo and portal information as I can so I can bring it back and get everyone web enabled so we can start using the campaigns and reach out and get people to come back in and ease the burden on our clinical teams and front desk because they have to make a lot of patient contact. So mm. we're looking forward to that change and shift. Um, and we've had ECW since 2007. 2007? You guys go way back. So uh, is how many conferences have you been to then? Oh, yeah, we've, we've both been to three. Oh, all right. All right. Yes. Excellent. So Orlando, Nashville, and Dallas, and two health summits as well. Any lessons learned from prior conferences? in terms of how to handle this much volume of information, digesting that, making that palatable. And that kind of leads me to my other question in terms of, you know, one challenge that many practices have is simply how do they stay current with the information, with the new features, and then, you know, one thing is the knowledge, the second is, you know, imparting that knowledge on, you know, your providers and your staff members. So how do you guys kind of stay current and then distribute that information within your organization? Well. I, I think about my first conference that I went to in mm -hmm. Nashville. I tried to get everything and anything that I could. That didn't work out too well. Like I was like, oh, we need to do this, and we need to do this, and we need to do this. So like at each session that I go to, that we go to, we, we made it a goal to at least get three key points out of them so that we can bring that back to the clinic. Ah. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Give me that microphone. 
Um, I think one of the things that we've learned coming here is it actually is important to stay on your track and then get a focus. The first time I wanted everything. I wanted to go to five sessions every hour. Yeah. Um, that's really not possible. Um, so just that sort of, I guess, self-control yeah. with the session planning and just try to come here with one information goal. Um, we are the only two here, so it would obviously benefit places that can send more than a yeah. couple of people so each person can have their own track. But um, I think we're here to get as much as we can but not skip anything yeah. if it's possible. And, and so to answer your question about how we stay current as well, um, we, I mean, ECW has tons of knowledge um, uh, on their, you know, my.eclinical. I, I push that all the time with yeah. my providers. Um, you know, we have, there's webinars all the time to, to stay current. And so we'll go through those webinars. And then we have biweekly trainings with all of our staff to show them what we've learned and how we can further utilize the system as well as one-on-one -on -one training weekly. Excellent. And I mean, for your organization, it probably, you know, comes with a specific set of challenges. So, you know, in, in your experience, maybe what some of those has been, it could be growth, it could be just being in a rural area, that outreach, but you know, what might have been some of those and how did you guys kind of handle that or continue to handle that? Well, it was the, the, the first thing that I saw when I got there was, um, the mindset was that, you know, Pecos is rural, we're going to keep it rural, we're going to, well, you know, as a community, yeah, like, yeah. we are not affected by everyone else. Um, but the more that we're showing people how to use the system, even our engagement with the patients, with Hilo, Portal, Messenger, yeah. um, they're realizing that, it, you know, change is good. And they're able to communicate with us a lot faster, a lot better there. Um, you know, we don't have as many refills being um, pending as we used to before. We don't have as many angry patients trying to get <laughs> a hold of us for, for their medications and whatnot. So, I mean, that, that was a huge thing for us. No, that makes sense. And, I mean, any advice that you would have to, you know, probably give fellow FQHC practices in terms of, you know, how you might go about or essentially lessons learned from your experience because you guys go way back with us. Well, I think the biggest, strongest lesson is that you just have to ask for help because ECW has so much great support um, and I think it was underutilized for the first 10 years of our eClinical Works practice and so Alessandro and I are on the phone, we are on chat, we are here, we are, the help is everywhere yeah. and so anybody has a question we can get right to it and we've had, um, we had an extraordinary visit from a practice management trainer who oh, nice. came out last fall can I say her name? Diane Showalter was oh. amazing. Um, and Diane. by lunch on her first day, she said, you are in too much trouble. I can't help you in <laughs> one week. I need to stay two weeks. And it wasn't optional. It wasn't a request. It was, I'm booking my plane. I'll be back also next Monday. And as a result, we, we overhauled pretty much every piece of our billing practice. And our sliding fee works. Our fee schedule is updated. Our x-rays are paid for. Our claims split. Patients get bills. Um, nobody gets shaken down at the front desk for cash if they're <laughs> on the sliding fee. Um, and just having her there to look into all the places in the system that were not really well managed or even understood, mm. um, the difference has been extraordinary. And getting that fixed then has allowed Alessandra and I to move to um, what I call the frosting after we spent all these years baking the cake in the background. <laughs> Um, so that our users can see it. And now we can reach out and show the patients what we have, and hopefully everyone will just get a little happier. But the help, the help is there. It's, it's just there. Uh, and our team is awesome. Our Sam is awesome. I mean, we... That's fantastic. We're like and, a big old fan club here. And speaking of frosting on the cake, I know one of the anticipated things, as you know, tonight... You guys going to be at that party, am I right? Oh, most definitely. Most yes. definitely, he says. <laughs> I'll be on the dance floor making a fool of myself. Uh, you guys I'll heard it. So <laughs> I'll be taking pictures of Alessandro making a fool of himself. <laughs> the gauntlet has been thrown. Definitely. So we're going to see you in the dance floor. Well, uh, folks, thank you so much uh, for you know, all that you guys have imparted. I think for a lot of practices that are out there, 
I think one of the big reasons that folks come here to begin with is just to network because they know day to day you operate in your bubble, your you know community, and you don't know what's going out there. And there's so much that can be learned outside of these sessions as well, uh, just by you know having lunch and talking to your neighbor and figuring out, oh, you guys do this, or hey, you know this is the same struggle that we had. Um, and I think you guys you know helped, and this is kind of a, a forum for you to kind of get your word out there and kind of interact. Um, well, I must thank both of you so much. Um, you guys had nerves of steel to come up here and speak in front of, I'm assuming this crowd is thousands. Um, so thank you all so much. Uh, this has been an eClinical Works podcast special. And make sure and check out the podcast channel on YouTube. Again, that's the eClinical Works YouTube podcast. Thanks from all of us here, and uh, we look to see you. Don't be a stranger. Say hello, and have a wonderful session. Take care, guys. This broadcast and its contents are the sole property of eClinical Works and are protected by federal law and international treaties. You are strictly prohibited from making a copy of, modification of, or form of rebroadcasting or re-encoding this broadcast without prior written permission from eClinical Works Public Relations, except as many be permitted by law. This broadcast is provided for informational purposes only. It is intended as a personal, non commercial use. Product specifications are subject to change without notice. Please contact eClinicalWorks Public Relations with any questions. eClinicalWorks V10 EHR is ONC HIT 2014 edition certified as a complete EHR. eClinicalWorks V10 CC 2014 95 54 47-1.